BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hello, I'm Iona Ballantyne and this is the Scottish Football Podcast. Kickstarting your week with reaction to and analysis of yet more heartache for the men's national team. It's good play by Mendes down the left, he gets the ball in! Ronaldo's there and he scores! But despite the latest late defeat, we'll have a look at the positives in amongst the disappointment. Robertson rolls it back to McLean, it's a really good ball, McTominay's there! And McTominay heads home! Six yards out, stop McTominay! Pulis the header! And we'll hear the latest from inside the Scotland camp. We have to understand what part of the cycle we're in. What we're trying to do, we're trying to readjust a little bit after the summer. We can use these matches to try to build and and make sure and the end goal is always is, is qualification for a tournament. The Scottish Football Podcast. Well, joining me for this one, Lee Miller, former Scotland international striker, and Craig Telfer, host of A View from the Terrace. Now, guys, before we get into it, Ronaldo, 901 career goals. How far do you think he can actually take that? Oh, he'll be desperate to go to the 1,000. Desperate. I don't think I've scored 901 in training. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you think he can do it? I wouldn't put it past him. I, I genuinely wouldn't put it past them. He'll be desperate to do it. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I think so. Ultimate professional, someone who looks after himself and someone who you could imagine playing in Saudi Arabia could play till he's in his like early 40s, 42, 43. He's got what's some like 30 odd goals last season. And you can just imagine the next like two or three years yep. reaching that milestone. So it's not out with the realms of possibility. And as Lee says, I think he's he's got that ego where he would, uh, he that's a, a milestone he's desperate to reach. Yep. Yeah, you can totally imagine that. It would be what a feat, honestly. When I get to that, I'm sure we'll all be um, jaws on the floor. But it is Monday, the 9th of September, the day after another Scotland defeat. It has been a year since we've seen a competitive Scotland victory. Lee, is it a broken heart this morning? Are you quite happy with the overall performance? I try to take the positives out. It was gutting last night for everybody involved. You could see that. They put so much into the game. There was, for me, there was loads of positives. Loads of positives. It must be so hard, right? We're in such a difficult group. And Portugal are such a quality side. We went toe to toe with them for large spells of that game. Yes, we're on the back foot. We were under so much pressure. But we created a lot. Of, we created a good few chances. Um, it's just that fine line, see, in this day and age. You need to score. You need to score those half chances, if anything. And I know Portugal had a lot of chances. Angus Gunn makes a lot of good saves. Could he have done better with the goal? Yes, in my opinion. But you can't, you can't grumble too much because he made some world-class saves after that. But no, it's just it's another frustrating day afterwards. Um, you just want them to do so well. You can see they're trying so hard as well. I can see you nodding away there, Craig. Yeah, I, I agree with everything Lee said there. Yeah, it was. It was. It's incredible to think you come away from losing to a, a, a side of the caliber of Portugal, and you're actually really disappointed that you didn't get something from the game. I thought that it was quite similar to Poland in a way where we actually played really, really well, and, and the, with the the change in system, the, the 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 speed that the players were moving around. But we didn't see that in the Euros and I thought this is a this is a nice step to go forward, but I feel like we're let down by individual errors there. I think that Angus Gunn, yes, he did make some good saves, but he was quite weak with uh, Bruno Fernandez. He shot, he should have saved that. And just at the end there, Scott McKenna gets himself in a bit of a fan call, trying to go toe to toe with Ronaldo and allows him uh, the the tap in. So yes, a lot of positives, but it's just trying to think that where do we go from here? If if when it's if it's the systems that aren't working and we've we've corrected that, then it's individuals that aren't working. I I don't know where you. I don't know where you go from here. Is it quite a frustrating feeling watching these good performances, but with nothing to show for it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think last night watching it, I've seen a lot of bravery from the Scotland players, taking it under pressure, trusting each other with the ball, and understanding they're going to have to do that because you can't just... At times, you seem like the full team, the Scotland team, and they're defending third. So as soon as you win the ball in that defender third, there's nothing to play up to. 
And listen, Lyndon Diggs, I know Lyndon well, and he done really well holding the ball up, yeah. bringing others into play, winning free kicks. But when you're defending in that, defending third, all the squad's there. There's nothing to play. There's no focal point. So you have to try and stay on the ball. And sometimes you make mistakes that way. You stay on the ball that little bit too long because you're trying to get support up the pitch. But yeah, it's just another frustrating night to be a Scotland fan. Well, here's what head coach Steve Clark had to say after the match. Obviously disappointed to lose to lose a game where it looked for a long period of time that we would get something from the game. But really disappointed for my players. The effort and the quality they put into the game deserve to get something from it. We have to understand what part of the cycle we're in. What we're trying to do, we're trying to readjust a little bit after the summer. We can use these matches to try to build and and make sure and the end goal is always is, is qualification for a tournament for a country like Scotland. So we can use these matches. It would be nice to get some points. It would be nice not to concede late goals, but this is a level that we're at because we have been a good team and we've managed to get to the top level of Nations League. And the players understand how difficult it is to get results at this level. I think a lot of positives, if, if, if you can ignore the results, but we're professional, so disappointing to come out of two games where I feel that we played very well in both games and don't have anything to show for it. So, like I said, it's... It's a level where the, the lessons are harsh, but it's important, and I spoke to the players about it in the, in the dressing room, is not to be too hard on themselves. Obviously disappointed, but they have to understand the work that we're doing. And I, I think if you look at the, the amount of time that we had to work, so in the summer was a back three, we decided to change the system a little bit for these two matches. And I think you see that the players have done good work. Like I say, that's why I'm so disappointed for them because they've put so much into these two games. The Scottish Football Podcast from BBC Sports Scotland. Scotland head coach Steve Clark there. Craig, it was the same starting lineup as against Poland on Thursday. Would you have liked to see some changes? I actually thought the starting lineup was the, the correct decision from Steve Clark. I certainly saw on social media when the Scotland national team posted the lineup. A lot of people unhappy. A lot of people were, were looking for changes. But I would, I would say that, that who, 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 would you, who would you have brought in that, that would have done anything different to, to, to that? And I think, yeah, again, I'm, I'm just piggybacking on the point that Lee made. The players were, were all really brave in possession. They looked to try and use the ball well. I actually thought Lyndon Dykes had a really good game for Scotland, particularly in that after Bruno Fernandes scored and up until up until his substitution, I actually thought when he went off, we... we we struggled a wee bit and really allowed Portugal to come back onto us. So I think that it was the the, the right team in the circumstances. Dykes is, is custom built for these kind of games when you're when you're having to to go to places where you won't see a lot of the ball and someone who is a good outlet for that. So I I was content with the side and that was when I saw those. If it's not these guys that are on the pitch just now, who else? Because there didn't really seem any creditable alternatives on the bench, necessarily guys that could come in and do something better. And I do think that's something that as fans that, yeah, you can be upset and be a bit frustrated that it's the the same faces. You're not necessarily seeing any evolution here or any revolution, but then the answer would be that if it's not these guys, then who? Would you like to see any changes, Lee? No, like Craig says, it was an experienced side who showed a lot of bravery on the ball. Don't know. I think there's possibly a place for, for dokes in there just to go and run. Uh, I've seen Doug at close quarters and I know what he can do and I know he's an exciting player but probably wasn't that a game for, for him to, to start in. I, th- I thought he could have come on a little bit earlier. I think the subs, Conway done well, he worked hard. Lewis Morgan couldn't quite get in the game and I think everybody touches on, I'm not singling Lewis Morgan at all, right? But everybody touches on um, McKenna for the goal. For me, it was Lewis Morgan. He let the ball come in too easily. The defender, the left uh, wing back, skips by him too easily. Instead of just either wiping him out or actually just sticking with him, he was very rusty when he came on. I thought, um, and he couldn't quite get up to the speed of the game because the speed of the game was was very high at that point, um, and it was just a bit gutting that, that that happened. But we have got good players playing at really good levels, so. I just think we need to stick with it. We need to stick by them. Yeah, just on that as well. I thought Scott McTominay had another really good performance. That's that's back to back performances from McTominay. 
think it, like he's like a it must be like trying to man mark a racehorse when he gets <laughs> up to speed and he, he's carrying the ball forward. Just a really good performance and a, a really, really, really good goal. I, I actually didn't celebrate it properly because I thought he was offside, so it was a wee bit like half hearted celebration, oh, just no. waiting for the linesman's flag to go up. But he's just he's just developing into well, I mean, see, developing he is such a massive player for Scotland, and I really hope that if he's playing regularly at Napoli in a position that really suits him, this sort of more advanced role, then then we can ultimately reap the benefits from that. I was just going to ask about Scott and, and Napoli as well. You you hope that what he does out in Italy, he can then bring back to that Scotland team a, again. That's his 10th Scotland goal in his past 12 caps. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, I think the two of them, Billy Gilmore and Scott McTominay, can out there. Um, hopefully, they feature um, and they, they grow and grow and they bring so much so much calmness on the ball but from a, from both points from defending and attacking they set up most attacks it goes through the two of them um, and they've been probably the most consistent players uh, Scotland have had over this past few while they just seem to, to grow in stature um, and the two of them are total opposite Billy Gilmore was obviously so small uh, McDominay so tall and stature but the two of them dominate the ball. Yeah. Dominate the ball. And it's great to see from a Scottish point of view, we've got two players that are, I think, world class, to be honest. Yeah, I think that going to Italian football will really suit Billy Gilmore, especially. He seems like custom built for that, where the pace is a little bit slower. And you see, you can, I think you can give him the ball in any situation. And, and he can protect it and then, then find a pass to, to, to give it. That's one of my favourite things about watching him. He always looks to make himself available for a pass and he's confident in his ability that he can take on. And I think he will thrive in Napoli. And McTominay, just as I said there, like, I think... I think Manchester United will miss him because I do think he has he's been a really important player for him and he scored some goals that I think maybe kept Eric Ten Hag his job earlier in the season. But I think that if he goes there and he's got a manager who trusts him and can play him every week, then yeah, we can we'll reap the benefits from that. And it's he's just had a, a, such an interesting Scotland career. He must have played everywhere through the middle of the pitch, you know, from centre-back to defensive midfield to number eight to just playing off the striker. But yeah, he's a good player. Didn't think he was at his best at the Euros, but when we saw the two performances we had from against Poland, against Portugal, we see how much of a, I hate using this American term, but a, a clutch player <laughs> that, that he could yeah. be. Yeah, I think it looked, to me, it looked as if, he did, like you say there, Craig, he didn't have the greatest Euros. It looked as if he had a point to prove. Um, mm. He grabbed uh, the two games by the scruff of the neck, and obviously, he just when he puts that Scotland shirt on, he just seems to score for fun. It's great to see. What about Angus Gunley? Some incredible saves, but could he have done better at points too? Listen, Angus Gunn is a tremendous goalkeeper, right? He will be coming away from that knowing he should have done better with that. Here's Mendes, wide left, layout, pulls it back to the edge of the area, Bruno Fernandes shoots and scores! The saves that he did were incredible, right? World class. But he will come away from that game thinking, I could have done better with that. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. I'm not a goalkeeping coach by any stretch of means, right? But for me, he could have moved his feet a bit better and get a stronger wrist to it. But taken away from that, he was excellent last night. It's so difficult to criticise him because he'd done so many things well. Came out and demanded his box, uh, commanded his box, sorry. It's a few unbelievable point blank saves, but it's frustrating, isn't it? It's the one it's the one thing. And when you're a goalkeeper, there's nothing that can help you out. You're the, the last line of defence, so they say, so yeah, uh, punished for it. Some ridiculous saves, Craig, at, at points. The heart was really in your mouth, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the saves he made, like, I think it was like a, a one man battle to stop Joao Felix from scoring. <laughs> the, the head, the, the save that he had. <laughs> He did too when Ronaldo slipped him in with a really nice back heel and he spread himself and he, he, he managed to get a toe to it. Just extraordinary. And the, the save as well from the diving header that he got down to, to tip around the post. And then the one for the Ronaldo header that comes off the post and he's <laughs> up and he's able to slap it away from his head. Just three extraordinary feats of goalkeeping. Back out left from Mendes to Joao Felix to Ronaldo to Joao Felix. Great save by Gunn. Wonderful build-up play. Scotland got it away half... Half clear, but Ronaldo picks up and finds Dallow, right-hand side chip, ball, header, good save, Ronaldo the follow-up, and Angus Gunn keeps it out, the second one might have come off the post, 
from Ronaldo. In comes the cross, breaks to Fernandes, left hand side of the Scotland box, digs it in. Ronaldo heads it towards goal, it's off the post, and Gunn somehow helps get it away. How on earth does that stay out? But it does come with the caveat that that Bruno Fernandes shot, which was, a, when you see it again, it did look like a bit of a sclaff and just didn't get, you could see it as well when the ball hits back and he thumps the turf. So it's a, it's a funny performance because, yes, he did so many good things, but just that was a that was just a poor goal to lose. And it comes off the back as well of the, the first goal we lost against Poland where, yeah, the ball was quite the ball was struck quite well. And I think if it goes at like an inch either side, that, that it's either hits the post or the goalkeeper saves it. But I think that, that Gunn's, Gunn's recent performances for Scotland, I, I, I think that we might be looking to start someone else. Does, and I know that's a funny thing to say because he did play he did play very well in parts last night, but but do, do, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's maybe like, a, a, and there's Xander Clark. You could look at the, that goes back to the point of making about the alternatives. Like you've got Xander Clark, who's lost his place at um, at Hearts back to back to Craig Gordon. So yeah, it's a, we're, in a, we're in a bit of a tricky situation with that. There's quite, um, it's probably a frustrating start. Scotland have conceded in 85 minute or later in five of their last six games in all competitions. Lee, why is that? Why are Scotland letting in so many late goals? Do you know, I was just thinking about it. See, when you said that, I was just thinking that's two games in the bounce. We've played exactly the same team. That takes a lot out of you. These high-caliber mm-hmm. games take a lot out of you. So then you look at the bench to freshen that up. Because they're, they're, they're giving everything to the game, then you bring your subs on who aren't quite up to it, I think. I'm not saying, I'm not blaming the subs by any stretch of means, but maybe they're not just up to the, the task and they're not ready to come in at that point. And it just, it changes the dynamic of the game. Um, making those substitutions, you can't keep the same those same players on those two games. So maybe you should make a tweak to the starting lineup for that second game against Portugal. I, I don't know. It's hard. It's a hard one to, to hear because the boys do look, so fit and they gave so much into the game but it just gets to that last 10 minutes and it's those wee tweaks and those wee changes just affect the rhythm of the game I think as well just on that like last night like when you're particularly we mentioned after Dykes coming off for about like a 15 minute period where you've seen very little of the ball and you're just defending 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 like physically and mentally that must be so exhausting to be part of so yeah I mean I'm quite critical of McKenna there but on the whole you've you've done so well and and Mm -hmm. when you're up against like a players that can unlock and unlock a defence can just get the run on you just like that the game can completely change and on like the the Poland game it's just a complete just a complete um, brain freeze from well from myself there in the first place, but the brain freeze from <laughs> from uh, from Grant Hanley to to yeah. give away that foul yeah. that, that he doesn't that, that he doesn't need to make. So it's just frustrating because you're doing all the right things. You are playing well. You're still mm-hmm. in the game. It's it's. I mean, those two games. I mean, we didn't look out our depth at any points. You know, I mean, we knew going out going to play Portugal, the game played out like like perhaps a lot of people anticipated we were going to be in the back foot, but we didn't look overawed by it. It's just that these fine little moments that can the, somebody just gets the run on you, you just switch off for a second, and that's what happens. The ball's in the back of the net. So I, I again disappointing, but like well, there is there are positives to to take going going forward. If you can play yeah. that degree of tempo, you can you can pass the ball around. You've got the players that are that are good and want possession. Then we can go out and hurt teams. It's just that going forward for this Nations League, if we do want to keep our place in in this this top tier, you're going to have to look to the games against Croatia. You're probably going to have to look to beat them both home and away maybe try and get something from from Poland away hopefully you can nick out a result against Portugal so there's very little margin for error for us going forward I like the positivity because we do need it because that is one win in 14 no wins in their last eight competitive matches Lee how do you keep morale up especially with the World Cup qualifiers and, and building up to that yeah, I was one of them where the friendlies we had leading up to the Euros, I thought, you know what, we're not getting results, but we're doing okay, we're just conception until the Euros, we'll be fine, we'll be all right in the night, and then obviously we don't do particularly well in the Euros, so yes, in one aspect it is worrying, um, because winning's a habit, 
Um, winning games can breed confidence, can breed confidence to the start 11, can breed confidence to the squad. Um, and we've not been doing that. Yes, we're trying to pick bones and we're trying to take the positives from different things and we're braving the ball, we tried to play, we played in the counter, we're, we're comfortable at times, we defended well, large majority of the game. But again, you always go back to, we got beat. We got beat, we get nothing from the game. And I think Steve Clark says that as well. It's, said he's, he's delighted. To, but I think I listened to John McGinn's interview as well and he said, listen, we were much better today. We we're more like ourselves. But we get beat again. So that's the frustrating part. I don't know. I, I think they're still confident enough. I still, I think they're still confident and they trust each other and they believe that they can get results. They're just not getting them. And then hopefully there's something that happens It just it turns and then we start to go on a run. Because if we go on a run, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be absolutely fine because we have got good players. Um, but we just need to wait and see what happens. Craig, are you feeling a little bit more optimistic? Yes and no. You know, I, I, it's it's a uh, uh, when you when you when you look at that record and you extrapolate it back to that that long period of time without a win, it, it does look a bit concerning. It feels like it might feel like you're going back to the, like the dark old days of like the 2010s where you're 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 miles off it and qualifying. You lose like a game and that's then suddenly the the whole campaign's to pot. But I think. If, if, like I say, if we can, if we can reprise those that degree of performance where where we we're using the ball, where we can we can play with that tempo, and you've got guys like him, um, like like Shea Adams will be coming back into the, into the team. I do think he's a, a really important foil. He'd have been really good, for instance, in the Poland game, for, uh, like even ahead, ahead of Dykes. So I, I thought played quite well in that game. So we've got a good good manager, and I do think that Clark's got a point to prove as well. Being particularly after that Euros, I think that the the calls for him to perhaps be moved on, I don't think they were necessarily unfair at the at the time because I, I don't think we, we performed as well as we could have done. But he has, has shown that. Um, that, that he is able to adapt and, and change things about to try and make the best out of the personnel that we've got. And it's, it's just one of those ones after you have a defeat, after you have two defeats like that, you just want the next Scotland game to come along to yeah. so we can so we can so we can so we can just play against like Croatia and it's the next one that's coming up and, and just show that we are a good team, get that win and get this Nations League campaign like back to how good we know it can be. Two more tough games coming up in October though, Lee. Do you think we'll see a similar approach? Would you like to see a different approach? I think we'll probably see a similar approach. I think the fact, and I think a few of the, the players, experienced players have, have touched on this, they're drip feeding the younger ones in, albeit they're not starting games, they're not playing a lot of minutes, but the fact that they're getting involved in training and involved in camps and squads, they're mingling, they're starting to know each other, and that can only be good for Scotland because we have a lot of good young players coming through. Um, so I'd like to see that a wee bit more. Um, and I think they're doing that so hopefully over the next whatever it is, few months they can start to actually feature in the games a little bit more and, and get used to playing with experienced ones because you know what it's like, if you if you throw too many in it doesn't work, so you need to try and drip feed them into that and hopefully we can do that over the next few years at least Yeah, um, get Lennon Miller in there <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> I'm intrigued to know from both of you, what is there a word you would use to sum up the past two games, the past weekend? Scunnard. <laughs> yeah, Scunnard, that's, that's probably the most Scot- Scottish one you can think of. <laughs> like just like going going to the Euros with such like a like a degree of expectation. It was an amazing tournament. I mean, I was lucky enough to be out there. I was actually working with Scotland there and and well the, the experience what was was amazing. The football what what wasn't particularly fantastic. But and, and we're seeing this this renewed uh, just renewed sense of, of coming into these games and I just to play well and to be like minutes away from from getting two points all of a sudden you've got you've got you've got none in these games so I scunner be the word that, that I would use <laughs> Lee what, what about you scunnered uh, so it kind of sums it up Craig, to be honest I'm a bit gutted um, just because you put so much into these games and you actually play well in the games but yeah these wee moments in the games just go against us. Listen, Portugal had a lot of chances last night. And you have to see in these high-caliber games, you have to ride your luck. You have to be mm-hmm. lucky. You have to. Um, but working hard, you need to deserve your luck. You need to kind of work hard and show what you can do on the ball as well as off the ball. Well, hopefully. We know it is Scotland. There will be positivity 
to come. It's going to be worth the wait. We better wrap things up for now, but thank you so much to Craig Telfer and Lee Miller. And thank you for listening. Now remember, we'll be here with the Scottish Football Podcast bright and early every weekday morning. So make sure you don't miss out. Just follow or subscribe wherever you listen. It is back to league business. So do make sure you join us this week. We will see you soon. Goodbye. This is the shocking moment English football has been dreading. My name is Moses Swebu and I used to be a professional footballer. But then I got in deep with organised crime and became a match fixer operating in the English league. A match fixing investigator has highlighted two matches he says appear to have suspicious betting patterns. How honest are you going to be with me? This is 100%. Join me for Sports Strangers Crimes Presents Confessions of a Match Fixer. Listen on BBC Sounds.